If you know how to be normal and to be like everybody else, next stage in the process of development is now I want to be something, somebody special. Now I know how to be normal. Now I can sustain myself. I know how to do this. But now I want to be outstanding. So that's the great masters. And I want to be somebody special. And everybody will look at me. Everybody will see me. I'll do something new. I'll do something creative. I'll do something that nobody ever did before. I want to show myself. So the best way to do this is of course on stage. Hmm? That's why we have these remedies for stage fright. We'll go into that in a second. So on stage, you can make everybody look at you, at your performance, at something very new, at your art, at your um, creativity, at, at your personal, your most personal expression. Hmm? You can also do it in work. It doesn't have to be on stage. You can do it uh, as a, let's say, as a teacher, because then you're in the front of uh, an audience and everybody will look at you. You can do it as, as a salesman. Uh, you can do it uh, at whatever job where you are creative, inventive, where you explore new uh, solutions, new territories, um, wherever a person wants to pioneer, um, invent something, innovate something, uh, do something that is never done before, we are in the fifth row. Hmm? So the fourth row, which is need for security and, uh, and, and safety, the fear is, of course, losing security, uh, the fear is financial loss, the fear is disease, because that makes the future so uncertain, or social unrest, eh? because then you never know what will happen to you. The fear of the fifth row is something completely different. Because you want to be admired, you want to be looked at, you want applause, you want um, uh, admiration. The fear is of not being appreciated, of being laughed at, or ridiculed, or you have stage fright, or you have, um, you have a fear of failure, of, of, of of being ignored, of making a fool of yourself. So even if a person has, a, let's say, a more or less normal job, on the fifth row, you will feel that the issues, the delusional issues, are something completely different than the fourth row. So it's not because somebody is working on an office, in an office, that he's automatically belonging to the fourth row, or somebody is a musician, and he's automatically uh, needing a fifth row mineral. It can be, it can as well be the other way around. And this depends uh, largely on the social context. Let's say a person is raised in an artistic family and um, he, uh, he learned a musical instrument from, from childhood on because all the family members did and all the children did. And then later the person knows how to split this instrument and maybe even make his work or his income uh, from this music, making this music, it doesn't make him necessarily a fifth row mineral because for him maybe it's just a job. Maybe it's just what he, he learned how to do and this was the safest way for him. It was the predictable future in his context and he didn't do anything new or inventive. He just followed what everybody already um, prepared for him. Hmm? And it can be the other way around, that somebody is working on an office, but has a very creative personality, or the need to be very creative, and actually his whole um, feeling of well-being, his whole existence, is based on how to express this, creative, this creativity, this uniqueness in himself. Hmm? Whether he uh, um, manages to, to, um, to display it in the outside world or not. Hmm? Because we talk with our patients and we know what, or we try to know what's going on in their mind. It's not always the same as what's going on in reality. So we have a few uh, remedies of the fifth row that we know, not so many well-known remedies as in the fourth row, but still we have a few. And among them, of course, is Argentum, that's probably the best known remedy, uh, the best known representative of the whole row and also palladium, palladium and uh, strontium carb. I think the other remedies are not so well known. We have uh, uh, stanum, 
an anti-monument in Rome, but the other ones are more representative. In Palladium, the best known rubric is the love of approbation, hmm? looking for good opinion of the others and uh, paying a lot of um, uh, importance to the opinion of the others. Eh? That's maybe the well, most well-known uh, rubric of Palladium. Uh, they also have the rubric that they keep a bride in company and they are exhausted afterwards. And their perfectionism and also their haughtiness. Agentum is the remedy that we know for stage fright. That's the first remedy we think of if somebody has a fear of failure or he has a, uh, ailments from anticipation or he has stage fright. That's the first remedy. We always give Agentum Nitricum, Agentum Naticum, because that's the combination we know the best, but in fact the nitrogen aspect stands for the claustrophobic um, uh, rubrics in the combined remedy. The fear of uh, uh, narrow places, the, the fear of suffocation, uh, the impression of danger, the hurriedness, the impulsiveness, all these uh, characteristics belong to nitrogen, hmm? not to argentum. So, in fact, if we discuss the elements of the fifth row of the periodic table, we shouldn't think about nitrogen. Nitrogen is, as we've seen, in the second row. So, the argentum stands for the control over mind and body. There is a symptom, lots of control over mind and body in argentum. Hmm? And that's the complaint. If that's the complaint, then we know the opposite is what the patient is trying to obtain. Control over mind and body. Hmm? That's something. Eh? If you control your mind and your body, that means you are in total control of your complete performance. Right? You know what you're saying and how you're saying it and how you're looking uh, in the eyes of the other. They also have problems with their voice. Eh? Agentum is a, a well-known remedy for hoarseness and problems with the voice and speech. Hmm? Strontium carp, you know, uh, especially by this, uh, the rubric, need for guidance. Hmm? That's the best known rubric from uh, the whole uh, remedy. So, we have a few pictures, uh, remedy pictures that are more, more or well known. If we uh, use them as representatives for the whole row, we can add the pictures of Jan Scholten in his book uh, homeopathy and the elements, where he beautiful pictures of all the, let's say, the missing links where he fills in the gaps. And these are backed up by many, many cases by now. If we go to the fifth row in detail, we can see how well this is reflected in, for instance, column one, Rubidium. Hmm? Rubidium is the first remedy in the fifth row which feels this need, this want, this desire uh, to uh, express himself in a creative, unique way. And he wants to do it, but has no clue how to begin, and he never begins. Actually, that's the, the, the disaster of the Rubidium situation. He's always in his mind, there's always an urge to do something new, creative, special, but he never begins. He's completely dependent on somebody else or something else in order to start, but he never begins. Whereas Strontium, in the second column is in the same way as um, magnesium is dependent and cal calcarea is dependent, eh? the second column remedies, he is dependent, but in, not for his uh, sustainability, but for his, and not for his security, but for somebody to guide him along and to coach him, because that's what he needs. Somebody who can tell him and coach him how to be creative to stimulate him how to be special, to help him how he and what he must do in order to find something new, express something new and go about. Now, column 3, 4 and 5 are the remedies Yttrium, Zirconium and Niobium. And as we already said in the fourth row, these are the doubt columns. Yttrium is the doubt what. So, if we combine the issues of the row and the column, we get I want to do something special. I want to do something new. I have some, so much creativity in me, I want to express it somehow. There's so many things that I would like to do. But I don't know what. I don't know what 
to choose or what to do or in what way I can show or give a form to my creativity. It has no form. It is still formless. And it's the role of Alumina. And we saw in Alumina that he has a unformed, malleable identity. It's not formed yet. In the same way, Scandian has no form yet as to what he has to do or he wants to do in order to sustain himself. And now in the fifth row it is the, let's say, the formless creativity. There is a need, there is a, a, a longing, there is an urge to do something. It can be lifelong and it can stay lifelong without any shape. They will look at others and they will even envy others and they say, well, they know how to express. They have found something in order to canal this creativity. But they themselves, they don't know. They, they wish they had, but they don't know. The fourth column, as we said, the, follow, the column that has problems with starting, already knows what he wants to do. For instance, you know, I want to be an actress or I want to be a singer. Or I want to be uh, an adventurous traveler or whatever. Hmm? So he knows what, but he doubts if it will happen. Hmm? And maybe sometimes it looks like it is happening. Hmm? Something, an opportunity comes and he will use his capacities. to He will take the chance to do something. But then, as the foundation is not really firm, it's only the fourth column, eh? By the least opposition, or by some opposition, let's say, he will stop. He will start, because it's the starting column, but he will stop easily when there's opposition. Opposition will, in, in, in the fifth row, means he fails in his first attempt. Or he did a performance and he feels he was ignored or was um, even laughed at, or he was criticized, and of course, criticized. Criticism is very, very difficult in this row because you want the plus, you don't want criti criticism. And the fourth uh, row is not um, certain enough of his creativity, of his performance, and he will stop. And that's the whole problem, that he wants to start, or he might have started, and then he stops. And it's not like, oh, it's a mischance, and I start again, they can fall in utter desperation, because their whole existence is based on it. Hmm? It's not just a random uh, anecdote. Eh? It's on the foreground of their whole life. This can be this one thing, this one chance that they miss, that they will actually uh, have repercussions for the rest of their lives. And it can also be delusional. It doesn't have to be something that really happened. But that the delusion that they once had a chance and they made a fool of themselves and they never dared to start again. The fifth column, which is Niobium, doubt how. So he, he knows what he wants to do. He's quite sure that it will happen, but he's not sure about the way it will happen. And that's why he postpones. I like to do this, I like to write a book, I like to publish it, but I don't know. And then they postpone because maybe there's no publisher, maybe I have to translate it first, maybe I should talk with this person. First, I have to make, make a nice cover or whatever. They will postpone because they don't see the way hmm, to go about, but they know what they will do. They might talk the rest of their lives about the paintings they already made or they, they are going to make tomorrow. Hmm? So that's the Niobium problem. Molybdenum is already in column six, and that's the column that wants to prove. Yeah, I want to prove I can do it. Hmm? They have the courage and they take the challenge. There's more bravery in molybdenum. And this is, uh, maybe you read the proving. There's a nice proving uh, with a picture or a dream, I don't know, of the proving uh, person, where there was um, a circus and somebody on the trapeze. And somebody was well trained and, and knew how to do it. And I think there was... Uh, man and woman, and the woman was new, and she had to like make her first jump, and she was afraid. And the man who was behind her more or less forced her, like, come on, now you're here, now you must do it, you can do it, come on, go ahead. And she felt on the, on the one hand forced to do it, but on the other hand, 
there was it was a challenge and like yes she was talking to herself i can do it i must do it i will prove i can hmm? there is some stress but they they go for it hmm? and that's the molybdenum taking the risk uh, actually going on stage or showing yourself look at me hmm? look what i can do and technetium in the seventh column is uh, as we saw with manganum still feeling like I have to I have to rehearse more, I have to train more, I have to improve myself first. Before I can, you know, become a successful performer, I have to learn more, train more, go maybe in a group, and then we work it with a cooperation. They would prefer to go in, in let's say, a theater group, and then taking the role and, and, and doing uh, something on their own taking the first role. They feel more safe if they are backed up and, and they have um, interaction between the groups so they can have feedback and get to know themselves better and, and improve their performance. So that's the technetium uh, stage. Why ruthenium is, like ferrum, the one who perseveres, the one who pushes through the one who struggles to get there. It's really firm like firm. They will do it. They will actually push through. And rhodium, the ninth column, is almost there. You know, it's only one stage before the success stage of palladium. It's almost there. That means it's the, it's the uh, uh, stage that you can best um, uh, how to say, symbolize by the last rehearsal. Tomorrow is the big show. Tomorrow I will do it. Hmm? So today there's the final rehearsal. And the final rehearsal, we understand, it's a lot of stress. And a lot of things need to be done. And they all need to be done perfectly. Because you cannot now allow any mistake. We don't have any time now. It's too late to change things. Everything must be in place and must be perfect and must be done to the uh, maximum today because tomorrow is the big show. It's all or nothing. But in fact, it shouldn't be a problem because we're well trained, we know exactly what we want to do and I will give them a good show. I, I trained so much, I did it over and over and over again. It's only, everything is there, it's only the last rehearsal. And there's a lot of hurriedness. It must be done now, it must be all at once, it must be ready. And some people have a life like that. Hmm? They want this more refined life because the fifth row in general eh, is more specialized. It's more, um, uh, as I said, refined than the fourth row. The fourth row is average, daily stuff. If they buy something, they will buy something in the supermarket, fine. Fifth row, no. Fifth row is special. They're special in everything. They're special about their clothing, they're very meticulous about how they will um, design their, their house, they're very uh, particular about eating, about clothing, about decoration, about uh, the music they like or the, the, the movies they like, or about arts, or about places they want to visit. They want this more sophistication, eh? more sophistication in their life. They're not like everybody else, that's why we understand that. Hmm? The issue of the whole row. And it can be in all details, even by the, when they're choosing a pet. Eh? It can be a special pet, not like everybody else. That's the issue that will be always there in every single little detail. Hmm? They are special, they are unique. Hmm? They are not like everybody else, that's the message. Hmm? So Palladium manages to do this. That's the success stage then, hmm? and they want everybody, or the uh, unconscious effort is to make everybody constantly say, wow, wow, what a beautiful dress you have today, or wow, what, how, what nice your house is decorated, or well, you always find something beautiful to give us present, where do you find these things? Or, oh my God, your hair is so beautiful, do you have special hair to us? Oh, you don't go in this town, don't you? They always have something that the others couldn't find. Maybe it was there, but they didn't have this, this refined eye to spot it. Or you just manage to combine the things a bit better than all the others. Or when you invite people, the Palladium, when you, they invite people 
just for a little snack and a little drink. It will be exclusive. It will be things that you never have eaten before. They will be very, very, very refined. The drinks will be special. The glasses in which it will be poured will be just perfect. And everybody will say, it's just perfect, like always. And then they're happy, because that is what they need in order to exist. That is their conditions to be okay. And everybody always in, is in admiration for how special they are, how unique they are, how creative they are, how something new and unexpectedly they came up with again, again and again. And that's how we understand <laughs> the rubric that he, you know, is brightly in public, but he's completely exhausted at home. Wouldn't you be? Hmm? It is quite exhaustive to have such a high performance in all details of your life, all of the time. This perfectionism takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So we can understand that if you ask yourself, so what's the problem to have success? Eh? If you're in the success stage of, of uh, the tenth column, what's the problem? In the same way, I told you that uh, Silicea, who is always showing, crying out, this is me, is limited to his picture, his identity, his fixed identity, this palladium is limited to his perfect picture. So he must, he shall, and he will always be perfect because he has no freedom not to be. He has, he doesn't have the freedom to be sloppy one day or to be careless. He can't. He just can't afford because then he won't feel, feel okay with himself. So he can't allow himself to be just natural. And this perfect show must go on day after day, day and night for the rest of his life. Column 11 is Argentum. We know Argentum on stage, high performer. So it is Past then, it means it has to maintain and hold on. Palladium is a success. Argentum is just a little bit over the top. And somewhere they feel this or they have this delusion that they have to try to maintain the success they had. That they have to perform as well as they performed yesterday. And because there is this a little bit of uncertainty, a little bit of this capacity already slipping through their hands, eh? they have a lot of anticipation. It's keeping up appearances, but with a little uncertainty. And that's makes, that makes the anticipation more. If you're sure of yourself that you can do it, there's no anticipation. When you're full of yourself, that's why palladium is called haughty, full of yourself, that you always will uh, display a perfect performance, no anticipation. If you're not so sure, if you're not so sure you can do it again, maybe you did it yesterday, but now you're nervous again because who knows that you make a fool of yourself now or who knows people will criticize you now, then there's anticipation. And that's the uh, biggest problem of a gentleman eh? with all the physical complaints that we know so well, eh? the stage fright and, the, and the, the belly pain and the diarrhea and before going up on stage. But it's... Um, um, you can uh, interpret it broader than only stage. It, it's not literally on the stage, it can be any performance. It can be a child that has to uh, talk in, uh, in front of the classroom, it can be a professor uh, who has stage fright day after day after day, even after 30 years of teaching, with the same argentum uncertainty. Can I still do it? I have to maintain this performance and I'm not sure that I can do it day after day. As we move to column 12, we have cadmium, cadmium uh, in the, under zincum, and we know zincum is very restless, trying to uh, uh, do something about what he feels is attacking his uh, security. Now cadmium is, because he feels his performance is attacked, uh, it's not sure the critic uh, criticism might be there, he's overdoing it. He's really overdoing it. Like shouting too hard, he inflates himself. He makes himself bigger, broader, inter more interesting than he really is. He makes a drama of it. Yeah? Or he reproduces himself because he doesn't feel that he's capable of um, bringing this new and creative 
and special things again and again. So he's reproducing himself in order to keep the performance maximum, eh, maximum of his capacities. Indian, eh, one stage uh, further, the 30th uh, column is nostalgic, like he feels he's obsolete. He feels his time is over and it's better to retreat. And he's nostalgic, but like those were the days eh, when he was having this success and this performance. Again, this is all delusional. It doesn't have to be the life story of your patient because when it is reality, then it's normal to feel like that. And we don't base our prescriptions on what is normal and logical and understandable. Uh, at the contrary, our prescriptions are based on whatever the patient displays as if. Hmm? That's so he doesn't have to be a successful um, singer in his time, now retired and thinking with nostalgia about the days that he, he was big. Eh? Because then it would be reality and then it would be normal and it would be explainable, explicable. But if somebody never had this situation, or never lived uh, in, this, in this big successful period in his life and only has nostalgia hmm? and had this nostalgia always when he was young and when he was old or when he is old yeah. then we can think about Indium. Stanum, column 14, is the decline of career. Hmm? That's, uh, that's what, how we know the remedy, it's tired, it's uh, exhausted and it, is, it feels dismissed, hmm? you're not needed anymore. While column 15 is antimonium, that's a better known remedy, and antimonium is like arsenic, losing it. It's crumbling away from under your feet, uh, at all, at all directions, everywhere, nothing much you can do. And tellurium, 16 column, lost it. It's under sulfur, it's lo lost, it's in ruin, it's decay, it's over, it's past, it belongs to the past. And we know of tellurium, it's the lazy remedy. The 16th column remedies are the lazy remedies. Because when it's over, what can you do? So, in discussing all those remedies in more details, I think you have a fairly good picture about the issues of the fourth and the fifth uh, row of the periodic table. At the first glance, they might be confusing because your patients will use them both. They will maybe say, I want a no normal life, or maybe they will say, well, everybody wants to be special, don't they? But you have to be sure that's the complete issue. It's not just a random word. It's not just one little uh, anecdote in their life that they want to be, you know, the queen on the stage. Maybe uh, it is because it was the wedding day or it was some special anniversary, but it has to be in order to prescribe for this particular row the main issue and you see what's at stake, what they want and what they fear not to have. And that's a completely different picture altogether, no matter how their life in reality is. Because we don't prescribe on reality, we prescribe on a completely delusional world. And that's why you can prescribe a fifth uh, raw mineral, for instance, for a child. Eh? Mostly the child didn't um, go through all these stages. Of course, he's incarnated. Eh? Maybe he learned how to be a separate being and established an identity, was in the process of establishing an identity. But the child will never have had already the experience of sustaining himself, uh, let alone how to be special. And yet we can prescribe all those remedies for no matter what age group that we are presented with. So it's only in their inner world that these things are alive and come to, uh, come to uh, a life picture when we question them. So far, we have gained insight in the animal and mineral kingdom. The next two sessions, session 8 and 9, we will go into detail about the plant kingdom. We will learn what the signs are that lead to a plant remedy and how to differentiate between the plant families that are mainly known for their pain sensation. These are the Ranunculaceae, the Papaveraceae and the Compositae. 
The detailed knowledge about these remedies came about from cases taken and analyzed according to the vital approach under the Farkas method. Enjoy this session.